approximately 14 years ago, I painted these basement doors for the first time. It really helps me date how long we've been here because they need it bad. And I, I've really put it off and I shouldn't have. Let me show you this right here. So down here at the bottom, alongside of the door, there's this rust that's actually eaten through. Like I said, I've put this off too long, but all is not lost. I'm not going to replace the basement doors. I'm gonna show you how to fix this. I know it might seem hopeless, but it's not. It's got a little bit going on the other side. I'll show you the whole process of redoing the doors, but mostly this video is going to be about how to fix that hole. I'm going to start by taking a wire brush to everything. This is definitely a legitimate time to wear a mask. Look at my arms. This is a dirty job. You don't want all of that in your lungs. I'm sure the guy before me used lead paint. This is where the project will get worse before it gets better. We've got to get all of this rusty business out of here and get it down to bare metal as much as possible. The hole's going to get bigger. There's nothing that we can do about that. And then we'll make it better from there. Look at where we are now. <laughs> like I said, getting worse before it gets better. That, I've got a hole up here. I took it down to bare metal. And then my plan is to first hit it with this. Rust reformer instantly converts rust to a protected paintable surface. Later on, I have this primer for farm implements. I figure that's gotta be the heaviest duty primer I can get rust preventative and then we're going to top coat it with something else i snapped the top off <laughs> the little pushy guy on my spray can but i figured out i could just use my paint scraper and still make it spray so man it's not glorious but better than running out and getting another can i'll be patching these holes with high performance metal reinforced Bondo from the automotive department. But first, we have to backfill it. So I'm going to use this great stuff, gap filler, which I love to use. If you haven't used this yet, it's so much fun. It's like whipped cream, but you can't eat it and you get to spray it all over the place and it expands. So I'm gonna squirt it in there. It's gonna come out the hole. Later on, I'll break it off and like shape it how I want it. Uh, so it, it, it backfills. So we don't have to fill that whole space with Bondo. If, you've ever worked with Bondo, you'll know why that maybe wouldn't be a good idea. So here we go. That's going to be good because it's going to get way bigger. There we go. We're going to do this one down here as well. This will continue to expand over the next hour or so. I need to go force myself to throw this away because if I don't, I will end up like just finding little holes to squirt it in and <laughs> making a big mess for myself later. So we're going to exercise some self-control in the trash can it goes. This is where we're at. The expanding foam is hard. You see it pushed out of the hole. This one down here, it mostly expanded downwards, but that's okay, because I actually want to pick a little bit out to make a cavity there to fill in with the Bondo. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. This one I'm gonna have to pick a bunch more out. I'd like the Bondo to be able to catch the inside of that edge and really be on both sides of the metal if possible. So this tiny little thing is what I got off of Amazon thinking that it was a gallon. Normally Bondo comes in gallon cans, like a paint can, and it was the correct shape and I didn't check the ounces, 11.2 fluid ounces. It's probably going to be enough. I'm just gonna to have to work wisely. It's just kind of funny because shrinkflation, <laughs> that's insane.
this is what comes in the can of Bondo. It's got the Bondo itself and then hardener. Now I'm used to the regular Bondo, not the, the metal reinforced stuff. Normally the hardener isn't a liquid like this. Normally it's a paste, like toothpaste. And I've gotten pretty good with just window sills and uh, like wood rot that I fix using Bondo and knowing how much to use. I usually mix a little bit at a time. When I read the directions, looks like I'm going to put 35 drops in for the normal amount that I usually mix up. It's like a golf ball size-ish. So the other tools that I need, solo cups. Sorry, it's not red, it's orange. And a paint stick. This is just a paint stick that I've stirred some other things with. I'm going to use it to mix the Bondo and I'm also going to use it to apply the Bondo. It says I have three to five minutes working time. And this metal is kind of toasty, so I think that that will maybe even shorten it. So I'm going to have to work fast. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to open up this Bondo. If you've never worked with Bondo before, I think I'm obliged to tell you, you should always do this outside. It is some nasty, nasty smelling stuff. I'm sure there's all the disclaimers about how it causes cancer in California, yada, yada. But usually things that smell like this work real good. So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna scoop in there, get a dollop. You never wanna put the hardener in the container because you're not gonna use it at once. You're just gonna use little bits at a time. Now, one of the things that I really liked, appreciated about the regular Bondo is that the hardener is a different color than the Bondo itself. So you can tell how it's mixing by what color it is. This hardener is just clear. So I don't know, I'm just gonna have to mix it real good. I don't know if it'll change color as it mixes. Uh, that would be really nice if they engineered something like that into it. So I'm going to use just about that much. I think it will be plenty to fill the hole. It can be sanded and shaped after it hardens. And the tricky part is it changes consistency as it hardens and as you work with it. I might not want to talk a lot while I do this, just so I can concentrate on what I'm doing. So just ahead of time, I'll tell you, first thing I'm going to do is take the Bondo and just jam it in there. Make sure it gets in real good, add a little bit more on top. And then I'm going to use the stick to kind of like to ice the cake a little bit and make it look nice. You can shape it afterwards and sand it, but the better you can get it on the initial application, the happier you will be later. So, all right, 35 drops. Where's the cap? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Clock has started. I'm going to start mixing. See if I can show you. I like these solo cups. I can turn them and manipulate them with both hands. It's pretty important that we mix it thoroughly. I don't know if it would ever dry and harden without hardener. It's some kind of chemical reaction that takes place. It's not turning colors like the old stuff did, just to show you how thoroughly you mixed it, which I'm a little disappointed about, but I'm just gonna be thorough. Right, here we go. Try not to bond over the door shut, that would be unfortunate sometimes if i do it too much i end up regretting it later i think we are at that point now all right so you can see it's not rock hard yet but it's way too hard to work with but i think we're good yeah it's pretty hard to the touch not sandable yet but that's how it's done Look at this. It's been about 24 hours. 
and that is rock hard. I can tell that the metal reinforced formula is definitely harder than regular Bondo. So that's great. You can tell I have some sanding to do. Uh, it's, a, it's a bulkhead basement door, so it doesn't need to be glassy smooth. I will just sand it so you can't tell any difference between that and any other part of the door. And then we're gonna prime it. I'm excited. This is where it starts to look nice. And that's always a rewarding part of the project. <laughs> that all sanded smooth even sanded high part down to bare metal that'll be fine I've got this farm implement primer it's not gonna look perfect if I was working on a car I would put an extra coat of Bondo on this smooth some of that out but this is a 70 year old basement door maybe less than that maybe 50 year old basement door so it doesn't have to be perfect it's gonna have these bumps and divots in it anyway so uh, we're gonna prime this baby basement steps there's no longer a hole in the door I can't say enough good things about this metal reinforced bondo it feels like metal it sounds like metal I'm going to top coat this